Chapter 13 The Annunciation October Adivaram Iruvadivate di Kalar Pinukati Jari Kanabada Ledu Kalaru Pinukati Jari Kanabada Ledu Prabanchaka Sambandamu Pinna Itulagin Chetra Desanam Kuda Chelenu Hampin Chetra Desanam Kuda Chelenu Hampin Maya Tolaganani Gruhamunu Vida Chariyan We returned from Hampi to Urvakonda by a bus. The next day I had to attend the school. I was going to the school. The collar pin presented by the municipal chairman of Bellari dropped on the way as I was walking to the school holding the books in one hand. It could not be found, but I was least affected by its loss. Yet I pretended as though I was anxiously searching for it. Some boys who were following me inquired, Raju, what are you searching for? I told them, You saw me wearing a collar pin yesterday. That is lost. I am searching for it. They too started searching for the collar pin all over the place. I laughed and remarked, You are going to the school to study. Why are you bothered about the collar pin? They said, It looks so beautiful when you were wearing it. One of those boys ran to Seishimaraju's house to inform him about the loss of the collar pin. At that time, Seishimaraju and Ramaraju were discussing among themselves. The actions of Satyam appeared to be very strange. How do we understand his behavior? When the boy reported about the loss of the collar pin and my searching for it, they at once rushed to me. Ramaraju lovingly put his hand round my shoulder and inquired, My dear, what are you searching for? I replied very innocently, I am searching for something. He understood that there was some inner significance in my reply and further questioned me. Raju, how is it possible in this world to search for something you do not know? I then replied, The collar pin you gave me fell somewhere and is not traceable. He said, Okay, it does not matter. I will give you ten such collar pins. Come, let us go home. Then I sang the following song, saying, The worldly link has gone, the moment the collar pin was lost. It was October 20th, Sunday. Baba returned from Humpy and was going to school. The collar pin dropped and could not be found. That was the day of change. The worldly attachment left him in the form of a collar pin. The pilgrimage to Humpy too served its purpose. Baba left home saying that Maya could not bind him any longer. For me, the worldly attachment was like a pin. And that had left me. The bond got separated. Hence, I left home on the very day. The worldly objects delude us. The day we come out of this delusion, the very same day, Maya illusion leaves us. In the meanwhile, several people gathered at that place, among whom was an English teacher by name H.S. Venkataramana. I was taken to his house. There they inquired, Are you searching for God or for the pin? I replied, I need not search for God, since He is omnipresent. Nor I need to search for the pin, for everything is in my hand. Then Ramaraju questioned me, Where is God? Can we see Him? Earlier, I had given Him a ring. It disappeared from His finger and came into my hand. He was stunned. He asked me, How did it happen? I replied, I can do anything. Everything is in my hands. Watching all this, Seishima Raju was astonished 
and confused. He gave up the feeling that he was the elder brother of this body. Shedding tears of joy, he asked, My dear, you are all-knowing. Everything is in your hands. Then what are you searching for? I also did not address him as brother. I told him that I was no longer bound by worldly relationship. I held the hand of Rama Raju and asked, What is this? He replied, It is my hand. Then I took out the fountain pen from his pocket and asked him, Whose pen is this? He said, It is mine. You say that it is my hand, my pen, my body, my mind, my senses, etc. The word my indicates that you are different from all this. Then, who are you? I asked him. Then everyone started thinking. Yes, what Raju says is correct. We say this is mine and that is mine, but we do not know who we are. Everyone was silent. They agreed that they did not know their true identity. I told them that I had come down only to make people realize their true identity. It is the eye that sees and the mind that thinks. Showing the handkerchief, the eye can see this kerchief. But to identify it as a kerchief, there must be a basis, is it not? You say, this is a kerchief. How did you come to know about it? You say, mind is the basis for all this. What is mind? To whom does it belong? You do not know. You think you know that which is not known to you in reality. That unknown thing is, in fact, your true self. Make efforts to realize it. From that day onwards, many seekers of truth started visiting me. They used to discuss among themselves. What Raju says is true. But how do we realize our true self? People quote from scriptures and talk high philosophy, but do not know their real meaning. They say, this is my ring, my body, my handkerchief, etc. But they do not realize who that I and my are. One has to make efforts to realize that truth. I started explaining the concept further. There are two important aspects one has to consider. One is Drishyam, that which is seen. And the other is Drashta, seer. It is said, Yad Drishyam Tanasyam, all that is seen is bound to perish. So, whatever you see is only an illusion. You are the Drashta, that is your true identity. The English teacher H. S. Ramana was a noble soul. His house was on the way to my school. He used to sit in the front veranda of his house and anxiously wait for me. As soon as he saw me, he used to call, Raju, take me into his house and offer coffee or snacks to me. But I was not interested in those worldly objects. Earlier I used to address him as Sir, but from that day onwards, I started addressing him as Ramana. I told him, You are not my teacher, nor am I your student. The teacher-student relationship is worldly. All that the eyes can see and the ears can hear are only worldly. These are perishable. One has to go beyond and search for the transcendental reality. From then onwards, wherever I went and whomever I met, I used to teach these higher principles. Then one day, Ramana called Seshama Raju and told him, Seshama Raju, do not trouble yourself much in trying to understand the behavior of Satyam. This boy is delving deeper and deeper into the mysteries of life. It is not possible for anyone to fathom his true nature. Let us wait for some time and see. So saying, he took me into his house and offered me snacks, coffee, meals, etc. with great love. Poor man! He did not realize that I was not interested in such things. I did not touch any of them. In my view, they were all worldly things which would undergo constant change. They were not permanent. 
you are treating unreal objects as real and striving to achieve them. This is the biggest mistake you are committing. Thus, I taught them higher philosophical concepts. H. S. Ramana used to address me as Raju till then. From that day onwards, he started addressing me as Guruji. Holding my feet, he pleaded with me, Guruji, please come to my house. Those who were witnessing the scene were amazed that this elderly gentleman, who was a teacher himself, was holding the feet of his young boy, his student. Then, Ramana declared in front of all of them, Not only me, a day will come when the entire world will fall at his feet. I told the people who had gathered there that it was time for me to leave the house and the school to embark on my mission to alleviate the suffering of my devotees. I then threw away the books in my hand on the ground and declared thus, Know that I am Sai in reality. Cast off your worldly relationships. Give up your efforts to restrain me. The worldly attachments can no longer bind me. None, however great he may be, can hold me. And he dropped the whole bundle of books. He returned home. Understand truly that I am Sai. No, no truly that I am Sai. There is no more of connection between us. Immediately he declared that understand that I am truly Sai. There is no more of connection. It is impossible for anybody to know me. And he is a poet, Sheshman. He said, Sheshamaraju being a poet himself heard this composition and thought that it was given to him by somebody else as a child is not capable of composing <laughs> such a poet. <laughs> and he returned home. Sheshamaraju also used to write poetry. He was not in the house when this incident happened. He came to know about it later through his wife and commented, Somebody made this boy recite this poem. Otherwise, how can he compose such a beautiful poem? There was an astrologer by name Rama Narayana Shastri in the neighboring house. Seshamaraju related to him all my talk on philosophical truths. He shed tears of joy on hearing my words. The tears actually fell on my feet. From that day onwards, everybody in Urvakunda started addressing me as Satya Sai Baba. This name, however, was not a new name. In fact, it was an old one. The name given to this body was Satya. The visions vouchsafed by me to the people were that of Sai Baba. Hence, they combined these two names and started calling me Satya Sai Baba. I then reveal to the people gathered around me, I have come to spread the truth. They were dumbfounded on hearing my revelation. I emphasize the point once again, saying, This is not a name which I gave to myself. In fact, it is you who gave this name to me. I have no name at all. So saying, I got up and started walking away. In the meanwhile, all those assembled there including Ramana and Shastri, tried to prevent me from going. I then advised them, Do not try to stop me. What I expect from you is not outward change. I expect that you undergo mental transformation. I have come to make you realize your innate, truthful nature. I am not this body. Hence, none can restrain me. Try to follow what I say. Then you will understand your own true nature. There was a big rock in the compound of Anjaneulu's house. Anjaneulu was an excise inspector in Urvakonda. He was a great devotee. I went and sat on that rock. Anjaneulu used to experience in my presence an inexplicable joy and see the spiritual aura of Swami. His house was in the same street as the school in which I was studying then. 
He and his wife used to wait anxiously at the entrance of their house with some coffee and snacks for me on my way to school. If by any chance their children were there at that time, they used to send them inside the house, lest the couple may have to face some embarrassment before their children. As soon as I arrived at their door, they would prostrate before me, holding my feet. I used to argue a lot with them, saying, Sir, you are older in age. You should not do such things. But they used to reply, Raju, it is true that we are older in age so far as the body is concerned. But we are very insignificant in knowledge and wisdom. You are Lord Krishna, verily. They were afraid that others might make fun of them if they extolled me like this in public. Hence they used to express themselves in private. I went and sat on the boulder in the garden in the compound of Anjaneulu's house. He felt very happy saying, Aha! Raju has come! He went into his house and told his wife to prepare a variety of dishes. But I did not touch any of them. I exhorted the people gathered there to sing the bhajan. मानस भजरे गुरु चरणम दुस्तर भव सागर तरनम ओ माइंड मे यू सर्व द लोटस फीट ऑफ द गुरु व्हिच विल टेक यू अक्रॉस द फॉर्मिडेबल ओशन ऑफ संसारा ऑल दोस पीपल गैदर्ड देयर वर वेरी मच सरप्राइज्ड हाउ सच अ मिरैकुलस चेंज हैज टेकन प्लेस इन दिस यंग बॉय सेशमा राजू देन अप्रोच्ड मी एंड रिक्वेस्टेड मी सत्या कम लेट अस गो होम I replied, I will not come. It was not in my nature to disobey the commands of elders. Seshama Raju was therefore surprised that I was for the first time giving a reply to him. He wondered, how did this Satyam pick up such courage? While I was looking at him, gently smiling with a calm and serene face, he saw great effulgence round my face. While returning from the school, Seshama Raju tried his best to take me home but I told him frankly that I would not come Anjaneelu then tried to convince Seshama Raju saying my dear sir you don't trouble him let him stay here itself after some time when he becomes normal i will myself bring him home in the meanwhile different types of people gathered there and started questioning me who are you Are you a devil or a ghost? I firmly replied in unequivocal terms, I am neither a devil nor a ghost. Know that I am Sai in reality. They then inquired, How are we to believe that you are Sai Baba? In those days, nobody had ever heard the name Sai Baba in that area. In fact, the name of Sai Baba was not known to anybody in the entire district of Anantapur then someone brought some flowers there i took those flowers in my hand and threw them on the floor the flowers arranged themselves as sai baba in telugu letters while i was sitting on that boulder in anjaneelu's house one photographer came there and took a photograph of mine when it was developed and printed A small stone in front of me appeared as Shirdi Sai Baba in the photo. Copies of that photo were distributed to all the people gathered there on that occasion. The boulder on which I sat on that day is still there in Uruvakonda. The president of the Andhra Pradesh State Satya Sai Seva Organizations, Anjaneya, built a beautiful mandir and a hall in that place. Nobody knew about Sai Baba in those days. When I returned to Puttaparthi from Urvakunda after my annunciation the villagers heard the name 
Sai Baba for the first time. They then thought that I had adopted a Muslim name, but Sai Baba transcends religion and caste. Wherever you seek, there you will find him. Vishnu Vega Pani Vaishnu Na Chunda Sevundu Gopani Sevulanaga Vishnu Vega Pani Vaishnu Na Chunda The Vaishnavites say Vishnu is great. The Shaivites say Shiva is great. The Ganapathyas say Ganapati is great. The educated say Sharda is great. The Muslims say Allah is great. The Shaktiyas say Shakti is great. My devotees say Satya Sai is great. Yet some others say all forms are one. However, you must proclaim the truth that all religions are one. And Brahman is one and only one. What more can I explain? O men of noble qualities assembled here. Divinity has no particular name or form. Whatever form you contemplate on, it assumes that form. Did Lord Rama or Lord Krishna incarnate with any particular name? It was only after they incarnated that people gave them names. It is said, Karshati iti Krishna, which means that the one who attracts all people is Krishna. Krishna was really the embodiment of bliss. Who can give a name to the Atma Tattva, which is the embodiment of eternal bliss, wisdom absolute, beyond the pair of opposites, expansive and pervasive like the sky, the goal indicated by the Mahavakya Tattva Masi, one without a second, eternal, pure, unchanging and witness to all the functions of the intellect. The Atma Tattva is immanent in every individual, nay, every living being. In fact, I have come into this world only to make people realize this truth. I explained thus to the people who had gathered around me. Seshama Raju then questioned me, Who are you? I replied, You are calling me Satya. Hence, I am Satya. If you call me brother, I am brother. Whoever calls me by whatever name, I assume that form. To tell you the truth, I have no worldly relationship with anyone. I answer by whichever name you call me. All these names are ascribed to me. They are not the names with which I have taken birth in this world. I have come into this world only to make you realize this truth. Seshama Raju was utterly confused and dumbfounded at my reply. He did not know what to do in the circumstances. He thought he should send a telegram to the parents asking them to come immediately. But it took a long time in those days for a telegram to reach Puttaparthi from Uruvakonda. Hence, he sent a message through one of his students asking Pedda Venkamaraju and Ishwaramma to come to Uruvakonda immediately. They both came post-haste. Seshamaraju brought them to the place where I was sitting. Ishwaramma cried inconsolably and pleaded with me, Son, come, let us go to your brother's house. I replied, I will not come anywhere. If you so desire, I will accompany you to Puttaparthi. I will provide joy to all the villagers of Puttaparthi and thereafter, go to any place of my liking. In the meanwhile, there was a lot of commotion and inquiries such as, Where is Raju? Where is Raju? Since I did not attend school that day. None of the boys attended the prayer meeting. All of them rushed to Anjaneyulu's house. But I did not look at anybody. I just sat on the boulder looking somewhere. Observing me, the children started thinking in different ways, like, There is a lot of change in Raju. He appears to be mentally deranged. Perhaps, something might have happened in the house after he returned from Humpy, and so on. I then advised the children 
that one of the boys must sing the prayer song in my absence and the school be started thereafter. 20th October was the day on which the entire town of Urbakonda underwent a total change. In tune with this, great change had also taken place in the student community. Their love and affection for me increased beyond description. A small incident to illustrate the point. I used to sing the prayer song every day morning in the school assembly. Our headmaster used to appreciate my song saying, Raju, though you are very young, the prayer song you sing stirs our souls. I used to sing the following prayer song daily in the school assembly. Moment to moment, thy clarion call resounds. Hearing thy magnanimous words, the Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis, Muslims and Christians come to thy throne from east and west, making the garland of love. Hail to thee, who unites all humanity. Hail to thee, who controls the destiny of Bharat. Hail to thee, hail to thee. Thus, I taught the unity of all religions in the world even in those days. The prayer song used to be sung happily in the school every morning by everyone, including the teachers, in one voice. After I left the school on that day, one Muslim boy by name Abdul Ghafoor was asked to go up the stage and sing the prayer song. He had a melodious voice and could sing well. He went up the stage but could not sing since he became highly emotional thinking of my separation from him. He wept uncontrollably. The students and teachers also wept, unable to bear my separation. After some time, the headmaster, Lakshmipati, could regain his poise and announce before the assembly, No more prayer for today. Come, let us depart silently. Unable to bear the separation of Raju from us, our weeping itself is prayer for today. The prayer ended thus in great agony for everyone and a holiday was declared for the school. Instead of going home, all the teachers and students gathered round the house where I was staying. Several students came to me and started reminding me of their acquaintance with me, saying, Raju, do you remember me? I used to sit behind your desk. But I did not even look at their faces. They were very much disappointed and wept inconsolably and left for their homes. That was really a pathetic scene. But I acted like that purposely with a view to bring about a change in them. Since then, the students were continuously after Swami. The students of those days were so pure in their heart and innocent. They never used to indulge in any sort of criticism, impertinent questions or evil thoughts. In contrast, the students of the present times are becoming more and more intelligent with noble qualities decreasing day by day. In those days, they were less in intelligence but more in good qualities. Finally, when I started to return to Puttaparthi, all the boys insisted on accompanying me. In those days, there were no buses plying to even book a Putnam. They were plying them up to Penukonda only. From there, one had to reach Puttaparthi by a bullock cart. That was the state of transport facilities in those days. The boys were not prepared to listen to anyone. They insisted, We will also go with Raju. How could this small village of Puttaparthi accommodate so many people? I therefore requested the headmaster to convince those boys not to come to Puttaparthi. I boarded the bus. The headmaster also shed tears at the time of my departure. Everyone present there felt very sorry that I was leaving. But I did not give importance to their feelings. I am not one to be carried away by such emotions. I should not. While I was coming away from Urvakonda, two boys, who used to sit on the same desk along with me in the school, ran after me, calling, Raju! Raju! From then on, my very form had changed. My words had changed. I was questioning them. 
What is the relationship between us? From where did you come? Who are you? Who am I? When Ramesh and Suresh observed my strange behavior, they were mentally upset. With great mental agony, they yearned for me, calling, Raju! 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 The bus started. Unable to bear the separation, Ramesh, the son of the Sirastadhar, ran towards a well nearby and committed suicide by jumping into it. He said to himself, I don't want to live without Raju. The second boy became mad, always babbling, Raju, Raju, Raju. Day in and day out, he was talking to himself, Raju, why did you leave us? Why did you leave us? He did not take food and water and always chanted my name for days on end. This type of madness was nothing but spiritual yearning. This boy Suresh was then taken to Bangalore and admitted in a mental hospital. His father approached me and prayed, Swami, he was sitting by your side on the same desk in your classroom in Urvakonda High School. He is my only son. Please come once and see him. I told him, that boy Suresh was different. This Suresh is a different one. No useful purpose will be served by my coming. But the boy's father insisted. Hence, I had to go to Bangalore and see the boy in the mental hospital. He was constantly chanting, Raju, Raju. He was not looking at anybody. I called him by his name and told him, Suresh, I am Raju. I have come to see you. Immediately, he lifted his head and looked at me. Thereafter, he closed his eyes and died peacefully. Both Ramesh and Suresh used to tell me always, Raju, we wish to be with you always. We cannot bear the separation from you, even for a moment. After both these boys died in such tragic circumstances, the classroom in which all the three of us used to sit on a desk was locked permanently. The desk on which we three used to sit is there even now. It was christened as Sri Satya Sai Baba desk. All the students in the school used to love me as their very life breath. I also reciprocated my love intensely. I used to share the vadas, pakodas, etc. prepared in our house with them. In fact, Ramesh and Suresh gave up their lives for the sake of Swami's love. Someone asked me later, Swami, you wrote the examination paper on their behalf and put their names on their answer sheets. How was it? I replied, Ramesh is also my name. Similarly, the name Suresh also belongs to me. All names and forms are mine. When I answered thus, they could not say anything further. Thus, if I go on narrating my story, there will be no end to it. Dear students, When I was a student in those days, I used to help everyone, provide happiness and joy to everyone and be jovial with everyone. Since you are students of Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning, you emulate my example and help everybody and share your joy with everybody.